In San Francisco, the number of people living in their cars or on the streets increased by 17 percent over the last two years. Officials say the lack of affordable housing is the main factor. People who are leaving California is because they can't afford it anymore. Affordable housing has become a crisis on the West Coast due in large part to the expansion of the tech industry. The people that are thriving in Silicon Valley are working in tech fields or fields that are supporting tech. Recently, these major tech companies have pledged money, like Google's $1 billion investment into the Bay Area, and support, like Amazon's construction of a homeless shelter into their downtown Seattle campus. These measures are meant to curb the affordable housing crisis in their communities, but it has left some community members wondering if they're doing enough, and if it's too little too late. Do you know how many times I've lost everything I own and start from the bottom build myself up and for whatever circumstance find myself homeless again, that's what I'm facing right now. The Bay Area, which includes major cities like San Francisco and San Jose, has the third largest population of people experiencing homelessness in the U.S., behind New York City and Los Angeles. Seattle comes in at number four in the U.S. In the Bay Area, 67% of those individuals are unsheltered, and in Seattle, 47% are unsheltered. And this crisis disproportionately affects people of color and individuals over the age of 25. There's not enough housing in the state of California, especially in the Bay Area, and it's affecting whether people can live. It tears apart families, tears apart churches, tears apart communities, forces people to move, takes people out of, takes children out of school. We need more housing. The region can't stay the way that it is. The region has to change. We've been homeless, we've been staying in hotels, we've been staying with family members, so it's been a lot. We're being ignored, we're being displaced, and folks who have no long-term interest in this community get to decide what it looks like and who gets to live here. I've been working with the Homeless Coalition for a very long time, just on my own. People are allowed to come over here and get newspapers and the newspapers is basically about what's going on in the community and they're able to sell it and the profits go to them. Organizations like these are working to help residents who have been affected by the housing crisis. And even though it's worse than ever, it's not a new problem to the area. As long as I've lived here, and that's 30 years, people have said, oh, the housing is just out of control. It's, it's no longer connected to reality. This can't continue. This can't possibly continue. And yet here we are. It, uh, um, it's, it's still happening. What's happened most recently, though, is that now we're referring to it as a crisis. I had a duplex along with my dog, my favorite companion, Navarro. Lived there for 15 years before I found myself displaced due to uh, the, the tech boom here in uh, San Jose in the greater Silicon Valley area. The rise of Silicon Valley brought huge prosperity to the Bay Area, but the influx of tech workers has brought huge ramifications too. Before there wasn't like Twitter and there wasn't all these different uh, billion dollar companies. And now that they're moving in, they're pushing us out. Here in San Jose, it's very interesting because uh, tech grew up in our backyard. So we've seen the various cycles, the booms and the busts, and our families have been affected by those ups and downs of the tech industry. The growing number of tech workers created a housing shortage in the Bay Area, with an 8.4% increase in population and less than a 5% increase in housing units between 2010 and 2018. The increasing salaries of these tech workers created staggering housing prices, with software engineers making a starting salary of about $160,000 annually at Apple, Google, and Facebook, 40% more than the national average for the same job. Rent prices in the Bay Area increased 21% from 2010 to 2017 when adjusted for inflation. For context, in that same time period, rent prices in New York City increased 9%. These were major contributing factors to the Bay Area's housing crisis. A lot of jobs, they pay well, but the way the rent is set up, I still don't believe that you can make enough to live comfortably. You're basically working to pay the rent, and that's it. 
my family has been displaced to other cities, um, friends to other states where they, they can afford the rent. So this displacement is not something new, but with the arrival of Google, it's just exacerbated and people are more fearful because um, they really think they don't have a chance. In 2018, Google was given the green light from the San Jose City Council to start development of its second headquarters. It purchased a total of 50 acres near the Deardon Station in the city center. When the city sold the land to Google in December of 2018, uh, there were uh, hundreds of young people especially that were protesting, speaking out. The mayor actually had uh, dozens of people escorted out of the chambers uh, because they were complaining about it. And finally, a group of eight people chained themselves to their seats. This backlash supposedly prompted Google to offer up an investment into affordable housing in the Bay Area. It pledged $1 billion in 2019. That's one of the things that people say is maybe a reason for why they gave that billion dollars, because they were facing pushback from residents. Now this Google expansion is going to directly affect the downtown area, but housing costs and the cost of living is going to raise throughout San Jose. It's going to have a ripple effect. And in fact, you know, rents have already increased. A week after Google's campus was approved, housing prices within a three-mile radius of the planned construction went up 7%. Within six months, housing prices had jumped 25%. Much of the media attention has been around San Jose with the announcement of Google's new campus. But Google is not the only reason for displacement in the area. Apple, Google, and Facebook, they've rapidly expanded and snapped up real estate here and there over the last several years. So it makes it harder for other people to be able to flourish in those areas. And it means that more of their employees are buying up the housing and they're getting paid significantly more than people who are already living there. So it means that it's mostly reserved for them. Basically, tech workers come to these cities with large salaries and purchase or rent housing at seriously inflated prices, making it hard or even impossible for those lower income natives to find housing for themselves or stay in the housing that they have. That, coupled with the fact that population growth in these cities outnumbers the construction of new housing units, has made life in these major tech cities hard for non-tech employees. We do stay in a car. Most of the time I park it on Treasure Island. Most of the times I park it on um, close to my mom's house so that I'll be able to still take my children to school and things like that. The median home price in the Bay Area is about $1.2 million. In Santa Clara County and San Mateo counties, it's even more than that. It's upwards of 1.3, approaching $1.4 million. These are the highest housing costs in the nation. San Francisco has seen this price hike for the past decade, with home values nearly doubling from $703,000 in January of 2010 to $1.37 million in January of 2019. San Jose has seen a similar jump, with home values rising from $511,000 to $1.08 million from January 2010 to January 2019. There's been a lot of pent-up pressure that's come out pretty well in the media about jobs in tech growing faster than the regional infrastructure. If you look carefully at the city of San Jose's general plan, uh, which is supposed to be between now and 2040, their goal is to bring in 382,000 jobs. And at the same time, they want to restrict housing production to 120,000. I, I sort of see it as a simple problem, supply, demand. That's, it's, it's pretty much that simple. So we have this incredible economy. It is churning out jobs. Still, to the present day, we're creating thousands upon thousands of jobs. It's the tech sector that's driving it. And so we're a very successful economy. We're not creating housing to keep up with it. They're making it very difficult for people who's been here for a very long time to live here. So it kind of feels like they're pushing you out of your home. Few would argue that job growth is a negative prospect for a community. But not only are community members angry that there isn't enough housing, they're also concerned about who will be prioritized for these new jobs. We've had years of STEM education or 
um, programs that would eventually lead you into tech but our communities people of color still don't end up in positions at many levels in the tech industry for u.s-based tech-related jobs in 2018 google employed 95 percent white or asian individuals and 74 percent male identified individuals apple employed 84 percent white or asian individuals and 77 percent male identified individuals facebook employed 93 percent white or asian individuals and 78 percent male identified individuals and a high percentage of these tech employees live and work in the bay area However, according to estimated data from the Census Bureau in 2018, the Bay Area is home to 67% white or Asian individuals. Tech companies are disproportionately hiring white and Asian male-identified individuals for tech jobs, leaving lower-wage jobs for mostly Black, Hispanic, and Latinx individuals. We see where they have diversity, basically in the service section, in the cafeteria. Most of these companies need service workers to operate their big campuses, and that includes everything from cooks, cafeteria workers, to contractors who make significantly less than full-time employees, and they are the ones at risk of also getting displaced. So you have the highly paid workers in Silicon Valley uh, continuing to flourish. Uh, meanwhile, we've seen the, the middle class just uh, erode on us. So all of those mid-range professions have disappeared. They've just left the economy. And so we're left with the very high earners and, um, and very low earners and not much in between. There are some benefits to these expansions, though. There are still people who are excited about Google coming. And I think they're getting a little bit more excited about it now that Google's laid out a plan and they're, they've said they're going to actively try to listen to the community. That's been one of the ongoing stories through the years in San Jose is the failure of really for San Jose to develop a retail footprint in downtown San Jose. It's always been a story of revolving stores and vacant storefronts and office fronts. And so that's one of the reasons why uh, the city's leadership is so excited about this Google expansion. But to these community members, the benefits don't outweigh the costs. So there are some good things, but they're eclipsed by the concerns of people who live nearby and who are worried that they themselves will be displaced once Google does get there. What a lot of people don't think of is just the psychological impact when you live paycheck to paycheck or social security deposit to social security deposit, you, you have that f fear of displacement that just the stress itself is, is overwhelming. And the Bay Area is not alone in its housing crisis. Seattle is our mini-me. Uh, everything happening here is now happening in Seattle. They're just, uh, they're a cycle, maybe two cycles behind us. In Seattle, we know that a $100 increase in rent 15% of the people in the city will lose their housing and 32% of the people in the suburbs. It's very frustrating to think that you've gone your whole life here and then it's like they're saying, well, we don't want you here because you don't make a certain amount of money. So we're gonna make this more expensive so you will just leave. Tech companies are realizing they need to contribute in some way, so they have done so in the last several months. In a blog post, Google's CEO explains the company's $1 billion investment. Over the next 10 years, we'll repurpose at least $750 million of Google's land, most of which is currently zoned for office or commercial space, as residential housing. This will enable us to support the development of at least 15,000 new homes at all income levels in the Bay Area, including housing options for middle and low income families. At Facebook, we're very thoughtful about how and where we grow. We want to do what we can to ensure that the regions are set up for success, to scale the infrastructure along with the, the jobs. Um, so housing is at the nexus of that. Apple is giving $2.5 billion to the cause, and in Seattle, Microsoft is chipping in $500 million. 
and Neighbors Amazon have opened a homeless shelter in their downtown campus. We created this plan where we knew that it was possible that no child would have to sleep outside in our community. And with Amazon coming alongside us, it elevated those families' voice. It really was the advocacy we needed in this community for others to recognize that children were sleeping at the end of quiet cul-de-sacs in their car, that they were in the back of U-Hauls with their parents because it was cheaper to rent a U-Haul than it was a hotel room, or they were sleeping in public storage units or in tents. Mary's Place, a homeless shelter for families, was given a new space built right into Amazon's renovated downtown Seattle campus. Mary's Place is not owned by Amazon, it is a separate nonprofit organization, but Amazon has provided the org with space and has pledged to pay its bills for the foreseeable future, and will continue to gather partnerships to further support Mary's Place. And that has driven us to really march to that No Child Sleeps Outside, to have enough beds in this community where no child will have to sleep unsheltered. Amazon also says it's contributed $38 billion into Seattle's economy since 2010. But what really is the responsibility companies have to the communities they inhabit? We create jobs, and those jobs uh, end up providing tax revenue to the city and to the state. And I think that's really our, our main goal and focus is on economic development. Corporations don't have any responsibility to anybody. They're just here to make money. And there's nothing wrong with that. Making money is legal in the United States of America. I mean, you could argue that there, there is no responsibility here except to submit to taxation and regulation, which these uh, corporations do. I've been involved in Seattle for a very long time. I'm a fifth generation Seattleite, so my roots run deep here. Um, I've seen the company be involved not only uh, in money and in-kind donations that we've given to a variety of organizations, but also in all of the boards that our employees serve on. And they live in the community, they work in the community, they play in the community, and I know that they really care about the community. Others believe what tech companies are doing is not enough. So in the months leading up to Google's $1 billion commitment, they were rapidly expanding and snapping up land left and right. They actually spent more than $360 million in San Jose in real estate and upward of $1 billion in Sunnyvale, Mountain View area. Let's say a, a housing unit, uh, one unit of housing, you're building one detached house. It's going to be, I mean, on the cheap side, it's going to be $500,000. So you do the arithmetic. How many units is that? A billion dollars? Actually, not that many. A billion dollars. And, and not just for San Jose, for all of the Bay Area. When you look at it, when you analyze it, it's not very much. Some believe that money should be coming from taxes. They can expand responsibly if they pay their fair share of taxes. Many of these companies like Google, Apple, Facebook, and Amazon are profiting from tax exemptions or avoiding taxation in the U.S. altogether. The Institute on Taxation and Economic Policy says multinational corporations and their accounting firms have become increasingly aggressive in seeking ways to shift their U.S. profits on paper to offshore tax havens to avoid their U.S. tax obligations. This whole idea of investing $2 trillion in taxes in housing, that's what needs to happen. And you can get that tax money by having these corporations pay their fair share. Others say the government, whether local or national, needs to be more forceful on the development of housing. It's also a number of laws and regulation in which it's decentivized the building of housing and incentivized businesses to set up and expand in the area places like El Camino Real for the length of it, all the way from San Jose to San Francisco. It should be dense, high-rise housing on both sides of that road, and it should, all of that housing should be oriented to, uh, to transportation. There shouldn't be parking at those housing units, for example, just the transit options, BART, Caltrain, express buses on El Camino Real. But historically, this type of growth can disproportionately benefit the wealthy, with more incentive for developers to create luxury housing, not affordable housing. If I don't have any type of subsidy or housing or low income living, then there's no way that I'm going to be able to 
or more, uh, majority of the people will be able to live here in San Francisco. There are so many options and opinions when it comes to how the tech industry could expand responsibly, or whether it even should, ranging from the dispassionate to the extreme. For me to believe that um, Google had any commitment to our community, I would have to see plans halted for any expansion anywhere in the world, and for them to really address what they've created in Mountain View, the headquarters and the place that they started, where now RVs are lined up just blocks away from the Google headquarters where renters um, have been displaced, generations have moved out because the rents have increased so much with the arrival of Google and how high they pay their employees. This is the 21st century. We should, as a society, be more enlightened in that, but also in a country, in a nation that is as prosperous as the United States of America is, that should not pass. We're so successful in Silicon Valley that we've just grown like gangbusters, and now we're, now we're uh, dealing with the consequences of that. The affordable housing crisis in the Bay Area and Seattle is changing the landscape and makeup of the communities that foster the tech boom. Companies like Apple, Google, Facebook, and Amazon have stepped up to provide support, but some believe their contributions are more for the press than for the sake of the community. Regardless of their intentions, many West Coast communities are calling out for help as they tackle the state of emergency caused by the companies created in their own backyards.